Morning super sentence stackers, welcome to the classroom. I'm Jane Considine and I'm your English writing teacher. We've gathered today to write today's story for the nation. And what we're going to do is we're all going to look at the same film and we're all going to play our part towards the story. Our film today is based on a wonderful story about a girl who is having problems with her hair. The story is called Hair Love and it's about a girl called Zuri and her trying to control her unmanageable hair. She looks to a vlogger for help and even though she gets some help from her family, it really is a battle for her. What we're going to do for this to work so that Mrs Considine can sew all the pieces together, you are going to watch the film. You can take some time to do that, you know, really enjoy it, relax, chill and watch it from the beginning to the end. Then Mrs Considine needs you to choose a chunk and in the description below is the film cut up into nine pieces. I want you to choose which part you're going to write to because I'm going to read all of your submissions and I'm going to sew the precious pieces together. And if you do really well, you might make, into, make it into the final story at the end of the day. Now, once you've watched Hair Love and you've found a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen, the next thing is you have to write using a certain writing approach. I need you all to write a third person narrative. This means we have to agree on the character names. Our central character girl is going to be called Zuri. A dad is going to feature in our story and we're going to call him dad. And there is a voice in the story, a voice of the vlogger. And the vlogger is giving Zuri hairstyling advice. Okay, we're going to make a start now and I'm going to be your writing teacher. I'm going to give you some advice and tips and within that I'm also going to challenge you to include three techniques of writing. One of the things when you start writing is I want you to try and have a go at writing nine sentences. But don't worry if this is too much for you. I want you to make an effort and try your best. Okay, um, what are our writing challenges today? Um, well, there are three and I'm going to talk you through them. Our first writing challenge is the sense of sight. This is where you're going to enhance in your writing all the things that your central character is noticing so that your reader can notice them along with you. The second writing challenge, I want you to ask a question and this is going to enhance reader engagement but we're going to ask a question using modal verbs at the beginning. Words like should, would, could, may, might and shall. Our third writing challenge is personification and this writing challenge means we're going to take something inanimate that isn't alive and we're going to bring it to life with the language. We're going to give it human attributes. These are all challenging things but I'm here to help you. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to be your writing teacher 
and you're going to see inside my thinking. You're going to get a window to my mind as I talk out loud the behind the scenes process of what I'm thinking about as I craft and construct my sentences. Um, you are going to see inside the writer's brain. What I'm going to do now is get ready for writing. Um, I'm going to write down the chunk that I'm writing within. I'm going to look at the times as I choose my chunk. There's a, a sheet that you can download that will help you. Um, I'm going to stay within those chunked times so I don't breach them. Um, I've got my name on my piece of paper and I've got my age. Okay. I'm going to start by introducing the central character's um, name here. Zuri's hair. Zuri's hair. And as I go back and reread that, because that hair belongs to Zuri, I'm going to put in a belonging to apostrophe. Zuri's hair, and now I'm going to think about what it looks like. I'm going to zoom into the sense of sight and really consider some of the description that I want to use. Zuri's hair was, now her hair is beautiful, but when she wakes up, it really has got into a bit of a mess. Zuri's hair was long and now I want to begin to introduce some of the problem with the language I'm using. Um, the sort of thing I might want to say is knotty. I think I'm going to do some thesaurus thinking and, and gather some synonyms in that family. Um, Knotty, that's my first idea. Other words in that family, I could have matted. I could have tangled. Oh, I like tangled. It's, it's really accurate, very precise, and will really work well as I'm trying to capture what the hair looks like. Zuri's hair was long, tangled, and uncontrollable. And that sets the scene of the main problem that we're dealing with in this story. Now, I want to now introduce the next character, her dad. Uh, so I'm going to start the sentence in that way. Her dad, um, <laughs> and then to really emphasise this looking, I'm going to use stared. Her dad stared at his daughter's and I want to now um, introduce that the hair is causing a problem and I want to think about that language in particular. Her dad stared at his daughter's thick curls. He found it, it referring back to his daughter's hair. Um, I'm going to gather some words in the synonym family that means, you know, po problematic. Um, I could use a word like puzzling. He found it puzzling. He found it challenging. Oh, that's a good word. Um, and another word in this family could be perplexing. I really like perplexing. I'm going to use that to finish that sentence off. Her dad stared at his daughter's thick curls. He found
found it perplexing. I think that really captures everything that we can see at this problem part. Okay, our next challenge is to include a modal verb question. Modal verbs are things like would, should, could, may, might, shall. Mm. I'm going to entice the reader in and build a rhetorical question. I think should is a good modal verb to start with. Should he try and help her? Should he help out? Mm, I like both of those. Um, I think this is the better question. Should he try and help her? Because it's a question, I mustn't forget my question mark. Now, I'm coming to the really tricky part of the writing because I'm going to take Zuri's hair and I'm going to turn it into a person. I'm going to turn it into a person um, using lots of language um, on the same theme. Now, to introduce the theme, the film has given me some imaging. And the imaging is Dad in a fight with her hair. We can see around the edge of that part of the film, a boxing ring. We can see the ropes. And we can see that Dad is in a battle with the hair. That idea, battle, and boxing and fighting. I'm going to think about all the words that we can connect and link to that idea. Um, I'm going to make a jotting of some of those. Uh, fighting. Um, the boxing ring. Other words that might help me punched. That's given me some ideas as I try and build this part of the story. I'm going to introduce the idea first. Um, the combing, because that's what Dad's trying to do, um, the combing alone was a battle for him. And I get the beginning an introduction of this idea was a battle for him. I'm then going to make the hair a boxer or a fighter. Let me have a go at trying to personify Zuri's hair now. Um, her hair was, I'm going to just say it, um, I'm not going to use an as or a like, because then it would be a simile. Uh, I'm going to go straight into it. I'm going to take that scaffolding away. Her hair was a fighter. I, I, I want an adjective before fighter. Um, let me have a little think of the sort of fighter I need here. Um, let me have a little think over here and do some thesaurus thinking so I can get the precise words I need. Um, was an, an aggressive fighter. Was a wild fighter. Oh, I quite like that word. Um, was an attacking fighter. I actually like the word wild because it's got a, a re very clever kind of dual hinting at both fighting and hair. So I'm going to use wild. Uh, her hair was a wild fighter. Oh, this is good. Really coming to life now. Was a wild fighter. 
um, who, and then I want to use some of these kind of boxing words, who jabbed, who jabbed at his patients, poor dad, who jabbed at, I'm going to use now another boxing term, who jabbed at his patients and punched his ideas. And then I'm going to think back to the film, that boxing ring, who punched his ideas against the ropes. I'm going to go back now and reread my work because it's really easy when you're concentrated on the composition and the ideas that you might make silly mistakes with spelling or punctuation. Let's have a little reread. This is part of my writing for chunk four. Zuri's hair was long, tangled and uncontrollable. Her dad stared at his daughter's thick curls. He found it perplexing. Should he try and help her? The combing alone was a battle for him. Her hair was a wild fighter who jabbed at his patience and punched his ideas against the ropes. I'm really pleased with bringing her hair to life as a wild fighter in the boxing ring. I can't wait to read your ideas. I really do enjoy all the writing that is submitted into Super Sentence Stackers. And did you know the best way to get hold of me is to post your writing on Twitter using the hashtag Super Sentence Stackers. You can also post your writing on Facebook using the hashtag Super Sentence Stackers and our Facebook page is the training space. You can send your writing into me and I will read everybody's writing. And I will see you back in the classroom at 3.30 when I've chosen all the wonderful chunks, piece them together and we can hear how you've played your part in building the nation's story. Thank you, everybody.